Yeah, Patrick Waz, Quebec Ramparts, a Memorial Cup champion. Safe to say, Waz auditioned for a return to the NHL. Couldn't have got any better. With today's news, the Flames and Rangers are not the only teams without a head coach. The Blue Jackets have technically got a vacancy, but Darren Dreger's already told us the Jackets are going to officially make Mike Babcock their head coach when his contract with the Leafs expires later on this month. We're going to discuss Mike Babcock's situation with the Blue Jackets in a moment, but first, Patrick Waz. Uh, the guys want a couple of Memorial Cups right now, but it's well beyond the junior ranks. He won the Jack Adams in the NHL at a 577 win percentage in the NHL. For, for the two teams right now that are looking at potentially other teams that may make moves down the road, how seriously should they consider bringing in Patrick Waugh? I think they should seriously consider it, but it would merit significant discussion. And it's as much about the way he left the NHL. It's not about his ability to coach. And the most impressive thing about his two Memorial Cups are the gap between them. 2006 and 2023 shows that he can adjust because the junior age players are very different right now than yeah. they were in 2006. Yeah. So that's impressive in itself. But the issue that he apparently left Colorado for was he wanted more control from the coach's seat. He wanted more input into player personnel. And I think there has to be a differentiation between a coach and a manager because you see the passion coaches work with, but trust me, I've sat with coaches after games. They want to trade half the team. Yeah. They're that emotional <laughs> about like and dislike in short term and long term. So that would have to be chatted about, Gino. The fact that he has to understand that there's going to be a boss that's going to be in control of player personnel. Does he have input? Of course, but he doesn't have say in it as a final say. All right. Let's talk about Mike Babcock. Uh, listen, his coaching resume is good. The guy can win, but there's been a lot of comments made by former players talking about how Babcock handled them or mishandled them more accurately. And now he's being given an opportunity with the Blue Jackets. What do you think of that? I'm surprised, quite frankly, and because he hasn't had a chance to show he's changed. It's not as if, like you could say, well, I've changed, which he obviously told Jarmo Kekalainen that he had changed. And, and you have to have changed. Just in the time frame, of how players have changed. We talk about Patrick Waugh yeah. from 2006 to 23. From 2019 to 23, players have changed in terms of their demands. They're much more demanding in what they want to know. And quite frankly, players may have a little more control now than they've ever had yeah. in the game. And so it's hard to look at and say that I have changed when you haven't had the ability to show yeah. you've changed in a pressure situation during a game. So that would be, once again, that would be a lengthy conversation and I'm sure he's worked on it in some fashion, but he hasn't been able to work on it behind the bench. Cronin gets his first NHL head coaching job as a 60-year-old. Kind of, for a lot of us, that kind of came out of nowhere. What do you think? You know him really well, I right? do know Greg Cronin well. I know him back to his college days. He was one of the three founders with Bob Mancini and Jeff Jackson of the U.S. National Development Program in Ann Arbor. So he's worked with elite young players. And the last five years spent in Colorado with the Eagles developing the American Hockey League players. So he's worked with youth. He was the head coach at Northeastern. I worked with him with the Leafs. Very intense, very <laughs> detail-oriented. And the intense general manager in Pat Verbeek got an intense coach in Greg Cronin. 